Okay, welcome back to another pickups vid. I think I should be looking down there. Or is it there? Or maybe there. I'm pretty certain it's here. We'll soon find out. But uh, yeah, I've got a cup of tea. That's still pretty, um, pretty hot, which is good. So yes, this is going to be a pickups vid. Sorry for the delay since the last vid. But listen, last time it was 15 months. And this time it's three. So what more do you want? It's an improvement, isn't it? So, yeah, I'd like to make them with a little bit more regularity, but I'm doing it again, aren't I? I said I was gonna look down there. Um, yeah, I'd like to make them with a little bit more regularity, but you know what it's like with work and finding the time and all the responsibilities and hobbies and I'm making excuses. So, yeah, I've just picked out a selection of games. There's quite a few, to be fair. Um, but yeah, just picked out some random ones, a couple that I'm playing right now. And there are a couple of sealed games. I'm not going for a sealed collection. Just haven't got around to playing them yet, so. But glad to have them. So, yes, let's start with what I'm currently playing. Just one game right now. I'm absolutely loving this. Now, a little bit of a backstory. So, this copy is the literal one that I bought in the spring of 2009. So, I've kept it all these years, like I have with lots of stuff, really. Um, but in some cases, you know what it's like, especially with games of this generation, which is PS3 where we kind of, um, we'll buy a game and then we'll have it for a few years and then we'll move it on and then invariably we'll buy it back. It's kind of what we do. But with this one, I've always kept it. I always will. It's become like a nostalgic title now because in the spring of 2009, I mean, I was living in America by that point, but I've not been here that long. So I had, um, I've got great memories of it. It's one of the first games, not the first, but it's one of the first games that I bought uh, in America. So anyway, that game on the PS3, is Little Big Planet, and this, honestly, it's so good. It really is, the graphics are brilliant, the disc is obviously in the uh, PS3. Um, I think the artwork might be slightly different, or the spine, compared to um, the UK version, but um, maybe not, I don't know. So, yeah, it's so charming, it really is. The graphics are really good, um, it's full of character, the music is fantastic, it's got a similar kind of aesthetic in a way, or certainly when it comes to the music and the humour, to Skull Monkeys, which was playing in the background last time I had the camera kind of facing, uh, the camera's facing over there next to the TV, and you could see a bit of Skull Monkeys in the background, so it's slightly similar in that sense, and, but yeah, the narration as well by Stephen Fry, so it's like an absolute match made in heaven, honestly, it's so good, now at times the controls can be a little bit fiddly, it will get you raging, oh, it's got me raging anyway once or twice, but it has that element, ele sorry, element, if I can speak right, where you just want to have one more go, just one more quick go. And then that's it, you'll finish it and you'll, right, I'll go back to that next level tomorrow. But then just before you knock it off, you're like, just one more go, another quick go. 20 minutes later, you're still at it. So yeah, really addictive. And like I say, it's just a really charming game, full of character, humour, and it's just a really nice game. <laughs> a strange description, but it is, I really, really like it. So um, yeah. Little Big Planet, absolutely brilliant. In fact, this was the first ever trophy that I ever got in the PlayStation and PlayStation 3 ecosystem was on this game. So again, further nostalgia uh, for that title. Really, really like it. Okay, the next one, I've not got too much to say about this because it's still sealed. It only arrived on Wednesday. So uh, I'm really looking forward to playing it. It looks really cool. So I don't know, I didn't look if it's out. You can almost see it there, sneak preview. It's a Switch game. There we go. Can you work it out? So, uh, yeah, it's um, it may be on the PS4. I'm not sure. I was just randomly watching YouTube. And, you know, when sometimes you get, like, ch kind of channel recommendations. And this one came up. In fact, video recommendations, I should say. And it was of this game on the Switch. And so I watched it and I thought, that looks really interesting. I like the look of that. Checked out prices on eBay. And there was one going for $25. I think usually it goes for, like, $35.40. And so I thought, well... I'll buy it, why not? So that game, I believe, is pronounced Kanai. So it's one of those, dare I say that phrase, which is a bit annoying, uh, Metroidvania. I'm sure you can't really work out um, what it is on there. But yeah, kind of platform game, essentially. I love the art direction. It looks really, really interesting and fairly, well, I say fairly unique. Got like a grappling hook, which you can use on different surfaces. And then you've got your, what is it, like a katana sword? to uh, the Japanese sword to swipe the enemies. So yeah, lots of collectibles, 
a platform game and uh, with a really good and interesting art style. So looking forward to playing that one. But not too much to say because, like I said, I've not yet given it a go. Uh, I did give this one a go briefly. This, this was months ago. So again, some of these games I've not played for absolutely ages. Uh, I've bought loads of games. If you remember, like I said, I'd, I'd not made up until my Christmas Eve vid. I'd not made a video for 15 months. So I bought lots of games and still loads that I've not showed on pickups vids, which I'll get to in the future. And so uh, I've just picked out a stack. And so some of these go back absolutely ages to the point where I'm struggling to remember what it was like to play them. So, yeah, for some of them, I'm going to be quite brief with my description. Uh, but of course, this is one that I did buy uh, last year, probably early last year, to be honest. And really nice condition. It seems like it's quite an uncommon one, really, to get boxed and complete. And then when you do get it, it's pretty pricey. Um, but I looked out, as you often do if you just bide your time. So uh, that game anyway, on the Game Boy, and again, I love these boxes, uh, it's Dr. Franken. And again, a side-scrolling platformer. Uh, well, I say side-scrolling, from left to right, from right to left, going back and forth, uh, up and down as well. So yeah, it's really good and uh, really cool music. But all, one tune throughout the game, but very kind of haunting, uh, but it suits the game perfectly. So yeah. Dr. Franken on the original Game Boy. Well worth checking out. I think there's a sequel. I'm pretty certain there is. And I think as well that's a little bit even more uncommon than uh, Dr. Franken. So that's that. Next up. Now this is a slightly, I'm not going to say controversial, even though I just did. Um, but it's one of those games that um, a lot of people prefer this version to the Mega Drive version. Now the Mega Drive version is much more, or Genesis, call it what you will. Mega Drive. And... Yeah, but some people prefer this, and that game is Sonic the Hedgehog. So, listen, firstly, I'm not going to lie, I'm going to be honest, I prefer the Mega Drive version, no contest. But it's a slightly different game. On the Master System, it's basically, uh, the similarities, of course, to the Mega Drive version, but it's basically a platformer, essentially, and it's a very slow paced in, compared, uh, in comparison to the, to the Mega, uh, Mega Drive Genesis version. But... Yeah, I do like it. It's really good. You've just got to... It takes some adjusting because it's a different game. Much slower and, like I say, more of an emphasis on being a platformer than kind of almost like a speedrun game that the Mega Drive version can be. So, yeah, it's still bright, still colourful. It looks really good. I don't know when it came out. Uh, well, I do actually. It says on the back, uh, back of the box, 1991. So, I suppose for a Master System game, it's kind of getting there, isn't it, towards rapidly towards the end of its of its lifespan. So yeah, I do like it. It's fun to play. Slightly different layout compared to the Mega Drive version. Um, but yeah, it's its own thing, essentially. So when people say, I prefer this to that, I mean, it's a different game. But nonetheless, I do prefer the Mega Drive version. It's just, I think for me, it just comes down to nostalgia. I had so many years spent playing the Mega Drive version, it's very hard to look beyond it. But I will say, fair play, the Master System version is really, really good. I do enjoy it. It's just a different kind of game. Okay, so two on the PS1. So this first one, I don't know if anyone remembers, but I remember anyway, back in like the late, ni late 90s, this came out in 1997. And I remember seeing it in magazines, like maybe the official PlayStation magazine, for example. And it would have like kind of a full page advert. They really promoted this one, at least as I remember it. Um, back in the day and I do remember seeing it in the shops and the second hand market and all that kind of stuff but I just never got round to getting it which is weird because really these games are right up my street so it's a first person shooter it's a corridor shooter a little bit like Doom and that game is Life Force Tanker so yeah it's um, it is good now the thing about it as I remember it because it's been a good few months since I played it I'm almost certain that you can't use the analog stick so basically you use the D-pad. Like I say, maybe I should have played it before I uh, made this vid to sort of reacquaint and re-familiarise myself with the game. But I'm pretty certain you just use the D-pad. And then there's the shoulder buttons which kind of lock up and down, I think. Which is really hard to get used to. Um, but you soon do it. It's just like anything. Uh, but yeah, I like it. It's good. The graphics are good. If you like the kind of late 90s polygon corridor shooter effect uh, that these games have. Uh, it's a little bit stiff because of the controls, but like I say, practice makes perfect. The more you play it, the more you get used to it. And I'm glad to have it. Now, this one I picked up from an American seller. So this had been on my list since it came out in 1997, uh, list of games to get. But I was not going to pay like 15, 20 quid postage to have this shipped on over to America. You could 
jog on, not happening. So um, yeah, when I saw it available from an American seller for around about $20, give or take, like I said, this is sort of mid to late last year, I thought I'm having it. Uh, I think there was a best offer, but I didn't want to miss out. So I was like, I'll just pay it. It's a good price to me. So yeah, glad to get it. And it comes with a bit of a fairly chunky manual there. Bloody hell. So yeah, not played it for a few months, but I'm going to go back to it, I think maybe later. So just glad to have it. And then the next game, oh God, I tell you, right. So speaking of games which have been on my list. So this came out in 1996, a year before uh, Life Force Tenker. And this has definitely uh, been one that I've been wanting to buy. I'm not going to lie, actually. I, d I didn't want to get it since 1996. It's been something that... I, maybe since maybe... Um, maybe since maybe. Since about early 2000s, I've wanted to get it. Especially in much more recent times. But it's an expensive one. So again, I saw this from an American seller. And it was significantly cheaper. I think it was around about $60. Now, there's a bit of a caveat, it doesn't come with the instruction manual, but I knew that anyway. And by getting it without the instruction manual, I saved probably $30, $40. And I'm fine with that. I can either pick up a, a complete version in the future, if I'm really that bothered about it, which I am, uh, or I can maybe look for a loose instruction manual. Um, it's not the end of the world. In this day and age, you can do what I've actually done, which is go online and just print off the instructions. <laughs> so it's like a temporary fix. Anyway, that game, it's very rudimentary, by the way, this. It's a very much um, a 1996 PlayStation game, and it's called Kingsfield. But like I say, quite an expensive one, but really, really pleased to have it. So I believe, I stand corrected on this, but wasn't it made by the same people who made um, Dark Souls? I think so. It's like kind of, kind of a bit of a precursor to that game. So yeah, the graphics are very kind of harsh looking, again, in that 3D polygon PlayStation mid-90s universe and world that we lived in back then. Um, but it's still good, and to me it's still really immersive, you know, but maybe it's because I can remember those days really well, uh, like being a teenager. I think if maybe you're a young person now who might, uh, might not remember, or maybe wasn't even born back then, if you're going back to these games or playing them for the first time, I don't think they're gonna register. You're gonna look at it and think, what the bloody hell's this bollocks? Um, but if you remember it from back in the day, I find, from my perspective, it's really easy to immerse myself back into those times and just almost play the game like it's 1996 or 1990-something, whatever it is. So, yeah, really pleased to get it. Saved a little bit of money. And um, I just love the spines. I always have done. I know they're bland. I say that quite regularly with just the white writing and the, the black background. But I just think they look really artistic and I love them. Right, so, um, two Mega Drive games. Now... I've said this a million times before, and maybe I should have said it before, the um, PS1 games. I'll say it again, just in case there's anyone new watching. But obviously I live in America. I have done now for 16 years, or in my 16th year. Not been back to the UK in that time. I'm not a traitor, just been busy. Uh, maybe one day, we'll see. And um, so when it comes to games, yeah, like I say, I apologize. I know most of you know this already, but when it comes to retro games, I prefer they haven't got to be PAL, but I prefer buying PAL because of nostalgia, you know how it works. So that's why I'm showing Mega Drive games and not Genesis. That's why I'm showing a PAL PS1 games and, uh, and not American ones. There are exceptions here and there, like if I really want to play the game, of course if it's an exclusive then I'll get a Genesis game or an American PS1. Um, but where possible I'll just wait, bide my time and just buy it from an American seller on eBay. I don't even really import these days. Like I say, the postage is, is it's pathetic. Uh, I'm not paying £20 to import one game. Not happening. No way. So, um, yeah, so I got these two Mega Drive games from an American seller. And uh, which one should we show first? Let's show the one which I haven't really played too much. When they arrived, and this is recently, two or three weeks back, I just literally put this on, had one quick blast at it, one credit, didn't get very far on it. Uh, which was to be expected because I'm next to useless on these kind of games. But I love playing them, it's a shoot up And it's called Biohazard Battle. So uh, a bit of spinage for you there. And yeah, even just the word in Mega Drive, uh, it, it has to be Mega Drive. Genesis means nothing to me, I'm sorry. Can't be doing it. So yeah, um, it's in decent condition overall. Um, yeah, instructions uh, boxing complete and all that kind of thing. So. Yeah, not too much to say, just had one quick go. I do think it's a fairly expensive game. 
by which I don't mean, you know, 80, 90, 100 quid or anything. I pro what are you looking at? Maybe 30 to 40 quid? Maybe 50 on a good day with like a bid in war? So I paid a little bit less, probably because I'm in America, so the demand is slightly less. I mean, don't get me wrong, sometimes if it's a really desirable game, even though it's for sale in America, obviously it still goes for a lot of money, it just usually goes for cheaper, because the market is that little bit less uh, than it would be if it was in the UK. But yeah, if it's a rare game and a desirable game, then irrespective of wherever you're selling it, people are still going to be interested. Uh, it's just that I look out a little bit, like I say, being in America. Um, but there's plenty of people who just maybe want to get the PAL version because it might have extra levels or it might have, um, I don't know, maybe like me, maybe they're from the UK or from a PAL region and they want it for nostalgic reasons. Maybe they're a collector, so they want to get like a, an alternative version. Many reasons. Um, so yeah, looking forward to playing it a little bit more. Glad to have it. I've been after it for a while. Someone picked it up on YouTube ages ago. Uh, which kind of prompted me to kind of put it into the back of my uh, my mind, my mind, my hind legs, uh, the back of my mind, and um, yeah, it's taken me a while, but I finally got it. I'm just useless, like I say, at shooters, but I like playing them. So this is a shooter, but it's more of a platformer, to be honest. This next Mega Drive game, and it's James Bond 007: The Duel, made by Domark. So again, I think the cartridge is in the Mega Drive. It is, yes. There's the instruction manual if you needed to see that and so here's the thing I do like this game when did this come out early 90s probably 92 let's have a look 1992 yeah so um I do like it it is good it's infuriating though in parts I've got to be honest the worst part about it for me is when you're shot and you can be shot like multiple times of course you can um before you like you, you lose a life but you bounce back like a thousand yards. It's ridiculous. And sometimes you can be doubly punished because you can be shot and bounced back and then you could fall off an edge. Now, one of the funny things about it, it's a nice little quirky thing in the game, especially on the first level, if you kind of fall off, uh, or you can just jump off yourself voluntarily, if you like, uh, off the ship, the first level's like you're on a ship, um, then there's like a really nice and funny uh, shark animation. Like, I'm assuming it's Jaws, maybe with the 007 Jaws character, like some kind of pun in there, maybe. Um, but yeah, and obviously with Jaws, the the movie, um, with the, the, the killer shark. So, like a double pun that, that is in the game. So you can fall into the water and Jaws or a shark will appear and uh, will kind of eat you. Um, I don't think you can escape from it. Before you get to it, you can kind of fight against the current a little bit by pressing the jump button and maybe jump out of it, but it's difficult to do. Usually, once you're in the water, you're kind of finished, especially when you go like too far to the left or too far to the right. I guess if you're in the middle, you're kind of okay. Um, and again, another really nice animation is if you are in the middle and you get to like a safe point, like a ladder where you can jump onto it to get back kind of on the ship, a really nice, very brief millisecond kind of animation where the water drenches off James Bond and um, just like, falls back into the water. It's just really nice, really simple touch. Um, but just the fact that they put that much effort and detail into this game, it's just really, really nice and you do notice it. So yeah, it's fairly responsive in part, not as much as I'd like to be honest. It's got one of those really annoying features as well where crates and objects can kind of drop down and they will just hit you. And sometimes you can just, uh, you can't really avoid them. There's nothing you can, well you can, but you've got to be, have your wits about, you've got to have really quick reflexes. I remember seeing um, Clint Retro Rewinds, this is quite recently, he was playing the uh, Master System version. And it just kind of made me laugh because the game's pretty much the same. Obviously the graphics are better on the Mega Drive, but it's basically the same game. And um, there was a, he went under this kind of um, part of the ship and a crate started to drop. And even though Clint moved out of the way, it kind of followed him deliberately <laughs> to, uh, to take his uh, health off him or to lose life, whatever happened. It was really unfair. I remember watching him and he was like, oh, that's so unfair. And it was, you know, I watched it back. I rewound the clip and it was like, that crate went after him. So it's like it was programmed just to follow the character. Um, but yeah, so it's one of those games that once you know a crate's about to drop, then on your next kind of playthrough, uh, you kind of know to take your time. You can either run through quickly or kind of start to move forward and then back off a little bit as it comes down. So uh, a little bit of pattern memorization, I suppose, like so many of these old games. But um, anyway, that's James Bond's The Jewel, which is really, really good. So um, the second and final sealed game, I'll have one more slurp actually of tea. Yeah, um, the second and final game 
a sealed game uh, for this pickups vid is on the PlayStation 5. And yeah, really pleased to get this one. This just arrived recently. It's called Bomb Rush Cyberfunk. And the best way I can describe this is basically Jet Set Radio. That's what it's like um, on your skates and uh, rollerblades and going through the city. Is it Tokyo? I don't know where it is. Um, but the graphics are really, really good. Um, yeah, in that very sort of cartoony uh, style. So as you can see, it's basically just like the, on the Dreamcast, uh, Jet Set Radio and whatever other systems that may have come out. On. So looking forward to, uh, to playing that eventually. Now, um... OK, so next up, I'm looking forward to giving this one a try. In fact, I'm probably going to start this one this weekend. So I think the original came out in around about 2006. I don't think it was a 360 launch game, but I do stand corrected. Um, but the first game was Crackdown, and therefore this is Crackdown 2. So yeah, even though it was an early game, I didn't get around to playing Crackdown on the 360 until around about, um, I don't know, four or five years ago. It just took me ages. But when I did play it, I honestly really liked it. And more than the actual game itself, I love collecting the orbs, the green orbs. Just like climbing up to the top of uh, skyscrapers and finding them hidden behind things. It was just, I just loved it. It gave me a bit of a buzz doing it. And I liked the game as well and the story and I did finish it. And as soon as I did finish it, it was like, right, let's move on to Crackdown 2. Crackdown 3 is also out on the uh, Xbox One. That was a good few years ago now. So yeah, this sequel came out in uh, 2010, according to the back of the box. So here we are in 2024 <laughs> and I still haven't played it technically, but uh, yeah, I'm going to start it today. So really looking forward to it. And um, yeah, it comes with a little extra here, which is like, do you remember like on the introduced on the 360, like little avatars? So you could like buy uh, like his DLC little kind of, in this case, it's like, what is it? Uh, a Crackdown 2 agency helicopter. So your little avatar would have like, this agency kind of hovering over it, like with a bit of an animation. A uh, load of nonsense, really. I'd never pay for it. Um, but obviously as a free download, then um, the code hasn't even been used, but I'm not even going to use it. What's the point? You probably can't even download it anymore. Um, but yeah, anyway, I'm looking forward to playing the game. That's what I bought it, uh, bought it for, not the bloody avatar. So, Crackdown 2, what more can I say? Really good game. Uh, the first one was anyway, so I'm, I'm sure the second is going to be more of the same, but better, in theory. Now, speaking of Xbox, so this one is on the Xbox One. And I had this back when it came out, which I think was 2016, but you know what it's like, especially with modern games. You kind of play them, you move them on, and then a few years later you buy them back. And I was just in a really a, a positive mood to play this game for whatever reason. Anyway, it's Forza Horizon 3. So this is the one that is set in um, Australia, and it still looks really, really good, despite coming out on the original Xbox, and I'm playing it on an Xbox S. The wording of the Xbox systems, it's so ridiculous. I think you have, I've got this right, but I'm probably missing something out. So you had the Xbox One. I'm not talking about the original Xbox, of course, the PS2 era. You had the original Xbox One, which came out in 20, late 2013. Then in 2016, I think, you had the series, the Xbox, no, the Xbox S. That's the one I've got, the Xbox S. And then you had the Xbox Scorpio, which I think was Xbox X, Xbox One X. Then you had the Xbox, um, what else did you have after that? The, the Series X, am I missing one out? And now, and since you've had the Xbox Series S, digital and physical version. <laughs> Honestly, it's ludicrous. So confusing. Um, but anyway, so it still looks really good, despite playing it on a, a 2015, 2016 Xbox system, the Xbox S. And yeah, I'm really liking it. It takes me back to when I bought it, uh, you know, if you can say back in the day from 2016, but it still looks nice. You know, we all talk about PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. And yeah, I'm sure if you put it on an Xbox Series X, it'll look a little bit fresher. Um, it'll pop a little bit more that, you know, a lot of the, uh, the slightly older games do on the more uh, modern technology, but it still looks nice. And especially after a while, you get used to whatever you're playing, don't you? Your eyes just get used to it. So I still think it looks good. It still looks nice. It's still fun to play. And of course, Forza Horizon 3 or the Forza Horizon franchise is very arcadey. I know a lot of people kind of get confused because there's Forza Motorsport. Now that is more of a simulation. There's still an arcade element, but that's more of a simulation. But this is basically arcade. So you're just driving around, 
crashing into things like right, left and centre. Um, you can turn around, go the opposite direction. It's, it's open world, essentially. So, yeah, if you like that kind of stuff where you don't really have to think too much, um, it's just a good game just to kind of shut off to and just, just to chill out to, I guess. So uh, that's that one. Now, two on the PlayStation 2. Pal, nostalgia. Uh, the first one I've not yet played. I have played this game before. Uh, and I've got all the, uh, if you want to call it DLC, they were kind of more like sort of um, spin-offs and uh, things that were connected to the, the universe. Um, but I'm very curious to see how it runs on the PlayStation 2. Anyway, that game is Half-Life. So in a way, it's probably uh, an accomplishment that they got it onto the system because this back in the day was, was pretty cutting-edge stuff for PCs. So yeah, looking forward to giving this one a go. I'm not going to lie, the PC is really the place to play this. Um, but nonetheless very pleased to have it and then next up is a game i have been playing quite a lot of on the playstation 2 and uh, did i say playstation 2 for that i think i did i mean you can see it is but i i'm wondering whether i call it playstation 3 by mistake maybe i didn't um but yeah on the playstation 2 we've got gran turismo 3 a spec i remember buying this particular version with the red case that uh, like it was yesterday uh, do you know what actually i say that i do remember buying it but did it come did this red case version come with um, the console, maybe it was the console that I bought and this game came with it or could you buy the game separately with a red case, I'm not sure but I remember having it back in the day and buying it as well and again, listen, of course it's a Playstation 2 game so when you're playing it and especially as well I'm playing it on a modern TV it's a little bit harder to set up the PAL stuff on CRTs because of the connect uh, connections uh, and connectors But so yeah, I've, I've got to bear that in mind, it's a slightly fuzzier kind of picture image that I'm getting on my PS2 but it's still good it's still playable but despite all that it's um it still looks nice it really does and it plays well it's still really addictive and I'll be honest I put this on when I bought this going back a good few months now maybe a year or so um and I put it on expecting it to be like oh I bet this is going to be a bit ropey it's not going to control too good no nope, it controls really good and um yeah I'm having a laugh playing it it's really uh it's really fun and you might have seen the the uh, memory card by the way it didn't come with a memory card uh, I just put that in there because that's got my Gran Turismo 3 save on there so that way I'm not going to get confused with it other memory cards that I've got lying around if I kind of put it into the case of the game I'm playing at that time then that's kind of how I stay organized so that's that yeah really liking it so it's very good gonna have a quick swig and then we've got the last two games so um yeah, this one's on the Commodore Amiga, so I was really, really pleased to get this. This is a game which every time I've ever seen it on the past in the past on eBay, it's always been really expensive. And annoyingly, there's one particular seller, I think they're based in Germany, and they have their Amiga games, most of them priced up so ludicrously, extortionately expensive. It's just a joke. Uh, you just want to contact them and just say, are you taking the piss? Are you having a laugh? Seriously. I mean, I'm talking like hundreds upon hundreds of pounds. Hundreds. And uh, it's just, it's pathetic. I don't know how the guy's still in business. But you look at his feedback, uh, you know, where people have obviously bought games. And sometimes you can see what games they've bought. And they're paying the asking prices. And as long as these idiots are paying these prices, then this other idiot, not me, the idiot who's selling them in Germany, he's going to continue to ask for that same amount of money. It's honestly, it's out of order. Um, but anyway, so I, I, do you know what? I pretty much resigned myself to the fact that eventually one day I'm going to have to pay maybe 150, 200 quid for this. Not from the guy in Germany because he sells it for like 600. It's pathetic. Um, but when I've seen it in the past from like a UK seller, uh, it's usually a bite now for like 150 or something along those lines. Um, a lot of money, way more than it's, well, I say way more than it's worth. It's kind of what it goes for. Way more than it should go for, but it is what it is. I guess, obviously, what we forget, I think, sometimes with the Amiga generation is that games weren't really... Not many of them were printed in comparison today, anyway, where there's hundreds of thousands, millions of copies of games. It's not going to be difficult getting 90% of PlayStation 3, 4, 5 games in the future, Xbox as well. It just isn't. Whereas the Amiga games, it's harder. It's becoming even more hard because of the cardboard as well. People just throw them out or they'd rip. Uh, this is starting to tear a little bit at the top, but it's not a problem. Uh, and it's still 
semi-sealed, three quarters of it, it's just the top has been opened. Anyway, I'll crack on with it. It's a platformer game. Uh, there was a sequel as well. Um, I think they both also came out on the Atari ST. And that game, I nearly bloody dropped it there. Uh, Nicky Boom is what you call this one. And I like the, look at that, the pink sides there. Very kind of bright and colourful and very early 90s. So, um, yeah, it's basically a platformer, ultimately. Um, you know, collect all the, the fruits and the sweets, uh, you get points and that kind of thing. Typical Amiga back in the day, early 90s game. Um, but I paid, do you know what, I can't remember exactly how much I paid, but I swear it can't have been much more than $25. It was on a buy it now, uh, from a seller in America, I should say. Uh, buy it now, and it was like a newly listed one. And it also had a best offer, but I had to have a double take when I saw it. I thought, is there something wrong with it? Because it was listed as kind of three quarters of the way sealed. You can probably still see the ceiling down here. It's just the top, and there's a little bit of damage at the top. But really, if you push that kind of card back, the paper, uh, I could even probably glue it back into place. And it's not that bad, even to begin with. Um, but if I were to glue it back, it would just look really, really good. So, um, yeah, newly listed item with a best offer. But as soon as I saw it, I had that double take. I was like, there must be something wrong with it. Does it not come with the discs? Is it not working? Is it like a foreign language version? So I kind of did that thing. I don't know if you ever do the same, where you see a deal which is too good to be true. And you read, reread, and re reread the item description, thinking, right, what's the catch? Well, am I reading this right? And in the end, I just kind of gingerly just kind of almost squinted my eyes. I was like, mm, okay, with caution, buy it now and just paid for it. Worst case scenario, I thought, well, eBay's going to cover me. I can always get my money back. And yeah, it arrived, box complete, discs are inside, and it's a really good game. I played it before, albeit on, um, not quite emulation, uh, emulation of sorts, like via the Amiga, like on the um, uh, WHD load. Uh, so yeah, I like it, really pleased to have it. And to pay like $25 for it, when the last time I saw it sell was around about 150 quid, and that's how much it usually goes for, apart from the guy in Germany. Who, if you have a look on eBay now, I, I tell you what, I laugh if you look on eBay now, like eBay UK, uh, and you see like a copy that's, you know, got no bids with a minute left at like five quid. But trust me, usually that doesn't happen. You'll probably still see the guy in Germany. I'm sure he's listing it for hundreds and hundreds of pounds. And here's me getting it for $25, which is like, is that like 28 quid? Something like that. Delighted to get it. Really, really pleased. So um, that's that one. I don't buy that many Amiga games these days, but of course I love it. Nostalgically, I love the system and the ST. So whenever I get an opportunity um, to get a game that I want, because I don't just buy anything, it's got to be a game that is either meant to be really good that I don't know about, and there's not many of those. That's pretty few and far between. Or more often than not, it's a nostalgic game. It's one I used to have or a friend had or I'm aware of, but I just never played back in the day. Back in the day. So speaking of back in the day, this is another steal. Now, it does have a little bit of damage on, but it's very, very hard to find games. Um, this particular version, which doesn't have at least a, a bit of damage on. It's just the way it is. And um, I have owned this before, like back in the late 90s. And um, I don't know what happened to it, actually. Maybe I sold it. Maybe it's... I don't know what happened to it. I don't think I'd have been stupid enough uh, to throw it out. Um, I probably sold it on, on you know the early days of, uh, of eBay, like the early 2000s. Anyway, that game is for the SNES, the Super Nintendo. This is the PAL version, and it's the tin version of Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Um, and if I take that out... Now, the cool thing about this, uh, with its limited edition um, kind of uh, foil sticker there, I like that. Um, it comes with its instruction manual, which is still sealed in its original... I say original bag. I think that bag is probably more for the cart, but either way, it's the original bag. Comes with the cart, of course, as you'd expect. I've already got the game anyway, uh, but it's nice to have it in this tin again. But more importantly, it comes with its... Uh, I'm not going to do anything with it. I'm not going to wear it, you know what I mean? But it comes with its uh, Street Fighter 2 uh, Turbo uh, badge, pin badge which is quite uncommon, really. If you look on eBay, and that's the, the inside, the little kind of polystyrene thing that'll, that'll come out. So, yeah, a little bit, a few marks here and there over it, but it's, it's actually not that bad. But yeah, if you look on eBay, it's very difficult to find this, uh, certainly in comparison to all the others that are available, uh, complete with, um, with a pin badge. That's the thing that is usually missing. So to get it, really, really pleased. And this was another one which, uh, buying it in America, I paid a little, a little bit less, a lot less 
So I got this all in, included uh, postage and including tax, which is like two or three dollars. Uh, Thirty dollars. It wasn't even on a bike now. There was one other bidder. I'd been watching it for a week and at, like maybe with a minute left, somebody placed a bid. And I thought, oh, you absolute bastard. Because I bet they put in like kind of a 70, 80 dollar bid or something. And I think it was like 25 was the starting um, bidding price. And I thought, oh, God, here we go. So it got down to like 10 seconds from the end and I sniped it. Of course I did. Who doesn't snipe it? If you don't snipe, you're not going to win it. You don't want to show your hand too early. And then people can see what you've bid because then you'll end up paying more. So the idea is to, to get in there right at the end. I know it's harsh, but that's what you've got to do if you if you want to win these items. So, uh, yeah, zero apologies for, for thinking of myself when I want to get this game. So, um, yeah, anyway, so I placed a bid with just a few seconds left. I think I put, like I say, a maximum maybe of sort of 60 odd dollars because this is sold um, on eBay. Again, you, if you're like, curious, you'll do a search. Uh, on eBay UK, but you're usually looking at around about 60, 70, 80 quid. So to get it for $30, which is about £35, all in, absolute bargain. So when I saw that I was the highest bidder with like sort of two seconds left uh, at like $27 or whatever it was, I just couldn't believe it. And then, of course, within, well, just a few seconds, um, the auction ended and I was notified that I'd won. I couldn't believe it. I thought really, really pleased to get it for a bargain. So to get that one, to finish on that one on the pickups bid, and that one, two absolute steals. 150 quid, apparently, or four, 500 if you're in Germany. Um, but for me to get it for 25, and then this to get for like 30, when it usually goes for about 80 uh, pounds, is, uh, yeah, absolute bargain. So, anyway, thank you for watching. It's gone on for a little bit, well, a lot, I'm looking at the timer, a lot longer than I thought. And uh, just one jump cut as well, when the phone rang. Apart from that, one take as you can tell, which is why they're always so rough around the edges. So I'm just gonna have a quick swig of tea. And yeah, apologies for the delay in making vids. Like I say, it's been three months, just over three months. Um, but hopefully the next one will be a lot sooner. Anyway, take care, thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.